Okay, well, welcome everyone to the new year. Um, I really hope it will be a, a happy year for the country and the whole world. <laughs> anyway, can people see the green? Maybe I should have used black. I wanted to help you remember Martin's notation because it's not quite standard but it's easy enough to understand if you can see it. So initially Martin will be talking about nonlinear equations and it's, it's only later that he adapted his, his approach to op optimizing a nonlinear function. Anyway, Martin, I think you should take over now and uh, start telling us about the nonlinear equations initially. And I hope we can understand how you adapt your method to optimization. Right. I want to um, first thank you for coming. And uh, it's an honor for me to be here after so many years being friends of a famous laboratory and a famous professor. And uh, until recently, I, I came back and visited him and told him the story behind all this. And he said, well, this is an interesting thing. Maybe we will share it. So part of my talk will be sharing some of the story I had. And part of my talk is in, in this algorithm that I, I worked on for like 10 years, roughly. And I think I've done my work. I think it needs more younger, healthier, people to, to do the, to the caring. So, okay, now let me walk you through this. Okay, so the abstract we could just skip because uh, I put it there in case somebody, somebody, somebody like to read and they could look at it, but we go over that anyway. Uh, what we try to do now is to uh, give you the formula that, that I used to develop the algorithm. And so you take any set of equation f and make them all equal to one, and you need uh, m equation and m function to, to completely describe this. And once you have that, uh, I start out with thinking, can I put that into a matrix equation? Just like that, m x times equal to one. So, and when I did that, and here's what comes out. And I was so happy to see this because it looks, it just looks really nice. It's more it's easier than I expected to see. Uh, and uh, this offers us a way to, to, uh, to obtain a fixed point iteration. Uh, further on, I will describe that. Okay. So this is the first, first step, which is convert. A set of nonlinear equations, as many variables you, you have, into a matrix equation, and, and then do it analytically, inverting, uh, write it down. And if, once you write it down, and next thing, of course, uh, I just copy it again. Next thing, of course, I ask myself, uh, can I invert it analytically? And look, turns out this particular equation uh, matrix is invertible, and the inverse of M is down here. And you can see that um, uh, all the terms are defined there. Um, and uh, G turned out to be 1 over F. You start with set equation F, but now you take the inverse. So now you inverted that, and then what's the, what's the next thing that I thought of doing? Was um, multiply them together inverse times m and m. And you just do it, and it turn out to be, that's what you get. You multiply them together, you get that. Where g average is, this, is uh, in, in all these terms. g average coupled to all the terms, and the g1 to k on each, each individual diagonal term. It's very pretty, very simple. And this, this leads to a a uh, closed point solution. And uh, 
uh, fixed point solution. And that fixed point solution looks like that. So you start with x on the right hand side, you put some gas value into x, and then you, uh, uh, you calculate the value of those terms, g, k, and g average at that, fun, at that x, and then compute the next one, and then do it over and over again, okay, and hope that you get convergence. Well, it turns out this set of equations to convert into matrix equations, you need a parameter r. And first out, we need two parameters. And one is I call R, what I call P. And uh, now, um, and there's a little derivation of convergence uh, demo. I, I won't have time to go through that now, but if you go through all that, I just want to show you uh, what P is. P is introduced as a bias uh, offset for, for uh, for, for, for G. So every G gets the same P, uh, G sub K, and, uh, and then that's how P is introduced. And R is called a root parameter, root control, okay? P is called path control, convergent control. So these two parameters uh, is what you need to do to get the right R and P. If you get the YMP, it goes to a point within the basin of attraction around that area. So that's the idea. Every RMP gets, if you get it right, it gets to one of those points. So when you look at the picture I show you here, uh, for example, here's an example. It's a two variable case. This is not RMP. Okay, in the two variable case, the surface looks like that, very calm, very nonlinear. And what you want to look for is the global min. And uh, you start with a point in the middle of the curve, and you, you run the program. And it will run, and, and then when you get the right RMP, it goes to the global min. But you pick a different RMP, it goes to the global, uh, local min. So you have your choice. You can look at them all, all global and local be able to find out where they are and how many you have. So that's the beginning of, of um, uh, uh, my work. First, making a, 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 a uh, equation solver and then using it to solve optimization problems. And uh, to, when you do, so this is, uh, <coughs> this is a very old example. And, uh, and you see that to do all this, um, you have to do some transformations. The transformation gets you from a different uh, bond, different, different constraint on the variable to eventually between one and zero. And when you have all that transformation, uh, everything will, will work out the way I show you. Too, too much detail now, but there's a, whole, a three transformation involved. Uh, you could write them down as one, but it's all there. This algorithm is actually uh, quite robust because, for example, uh, you could see that that uh, that on the on on the case here, where you start in the somewhere in the peak, and then uh, it goes off a little bit then changes mind, and then go to the global min. And if you look at a plot objective function, it looks like that. And so it knows how to change its mind, so it's in a way robust. So now what I'm proposing there is we use this program by not, not doing the normal way of plotting the objective function, because it's very hard to see what objective function is when you have more than two variables. So now you have a large number of variables. I'd like to find a way that show me uh, what the objective function really has, how many variable, uh, uh, minimum solution it has, where they are, and all these questions that I'm curious about. So over the years of working, 
that to me is a very important question. And uh, up to now, I, I will have to find a good way to do this. So I made this up now uh, just to do this, to do a validation of solution. Uh, so in that, what you're doing then is, is that every RNP defines a, a, a path between a starting point and a point that has a lower subjective function along the path. And, it, uh, and you could just search over RMP and then find out all the solutions that you are interested in. So that's the purpose of making this program, and, and uh, that's where we are now. We, are, we have done a lot of you know, tests, mayor problems, and, and other ones. So we, we were looking for big problems to do when I came to see uh, 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 Michael about six months ago. So if you have a big problem, give it to Michael, and we'll give it a try. And we'll show you what these maps look like. So, OK, now that's. Then we recently, I work on a, a derivative free version of this. And uh, when you make an optimization program, you still take the gradient of you know, the Jacobian and all that. But when you do it, um, I was hoping to get rid of that. So I made up something, and it seemed to work so far. But it needs some uh, more formal uh, 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 demonstrations or proof. Uh, so this one, it's a very, very complicated function. But in a way, it's not really. Uh, you make the construction, so this f goes to 0 when it converges. And when it goes to 0, this goes to 1. Same thing you always have as, as we start our work. So once, if you could make a, a function for that particular problem that will do this, and you will get converted. So it's a matter of finding a way of constructing f. And so far, I, I made some simple function, and it worked pretty good. Uh, I, I think anybody who wants to play with all this, is, you're welcome to do it. Get hold of Martha, or get hold of Michael, or get hold of me. OK. So now comes the story time. Uh, story time, it, my story on optimization started around 1971. And uh, in 1971, uh, I wrote a paper, uh, a, 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 what you call it, a, a lab note. It's a very small thing. It doesn't get published. But the names are big. So that's why it's up there. And you notice that uh, Bert Richter, his name's on there too. So I was working for Bert. And uh, he, built, he built the first storage ring in the world at, at, at Slack. And I was involved with designing the lattice for him. And that's what it looked like. And then uh, eventually got to work. And once you got to work, uh, it, 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 it's used to uh, uh, produce a lot of physical, a lot of experiments that, that got three Nobel Prize uh, from one machine. That's a very productive machine. And it over a short time, too. So I don't know any machine that efficient. So Spear has, has served its time. And now this one is kind of where, how I got into the business years ago. I, I was telling Michael today that when I first started, 1962, we need the alignment target for, for lining up the two mile long accelerator. And that's some tricks, because you need 300 different ones with different focal lengths. So you optimize them all before you have computer. Uh, that was a nightmare, OK? But the system still works, and, and it's here. And I, uh, my daughter just showed it to me. I, 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 you know, my picture got on there, too. So I said, this is good. I will, I will show it to you. OK. So what did it do? Well, it's the happiest thing you could think of. It's you look at a set of US stem, and you see the picture here. That dot 
corresponding to the detector made by this, this thing. So you want to line up a little section. You lower the lens, and you make sure they line up three points. Still being used today. It's a zero quick. Uh, that gets back on business, same way, same system. So optimization has, has a, a long life. Uh, once you get do something with it and it works, it keeps on working, and, uh, and it's a lot of fun to do. And, and I, I certainly enjoy, enjoy all the good years I have working with optimization. And, uh, uh, I was telling you the three Nobel Prize on little machine like Spear, and you can see that this is the machine here, and we, and then uh, three, three particular Nobel Prize got, got awarded, and then more more fun yet, years later, uh, there's no end to fun, because the work done on optimization, modeling, and uh, design, commission, operation, over, over stock, and now worldwide, everybody does that. So uh, CERN, uh, I, 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 one time, I want a computer to sit, to have all my program collected and sit in my office. So Bert Richter, director at that time, uh, gave me a next computer. It's sitting here. This next computer sits on my program, and uh, it was used in, in, for all the work that I've done, like 15 years or so. Okay. Until, uh, until later, it turns out when they need a server, 1989, they choose my machine as a server that served the first internet between CERN and here. You know how big that is? I think it's big. <laughs> so uh, I took some pictures again. I think, ah, oh, time to celebrate. So with all this story, I thought Michael would be the first one to, to enjoy hearing. Uh, um, I, I looked at the, the website that uh, SOL has, uh, Michael's website. And somebody wrote about Michael, and uh, it's what it says. You say you got any big big problems or whatever. Okay. Go, go talk to him. I was back in the ninety two. Well, we are now here. So I'm gonna ask you look at look the same question. If you like to know the nature of your objective function, the basic attraction part perhaps can help. And every one of these parts is just one of these little birds. And when I first, this is a part of two dimension, R and P, and over many, many values, and it looks like a bird. When I first saw it, I said, wow, that's a peace bird. And for a time like today, it's, it has a message. So I, I want to use as my icon from now on. Uh, okay, so I think uh, I'd like to open the floor for discussion or questions or comment and have some feedback, whatever. Uh, I think that my talk ends about here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.